This is about attempt number six on this. Hello, lovelies. <laughs> I'm getting myself all in a pickle here. lovelies and welcome to the April 2022 episode of the Not Quite Enough Yarn podcast. My name's Leslie and this is a podcast about knitting, crochet, yarn, spinning, general craft stuff uh, recorded on the south coast of the UK. Welcome. If you're new here, thank you for finding me. If you're a returning viewer, thank you for coming back. I appreciate what that takes. So <laughs> So welcome everyone, lovely to have you here. Which, for those of you who are new, that was almost a word, wasn't it? Let's try that again. For those of you who are new, <laughs> it's called the Not Quite Enough Yarn Podcast because normally I don't have enough of the same yarn to make a, a whole item. I'm going to disprove that with this particular finished object that I'm wearing that I'll come on to in a sec. But normally I'm adding in stripes and blocks and all sorts of things to um, to make up the quantities. So although I have a lot of yarn and I'm trying not to increase my yarn stash, I'm trying to, to shrink it a little. Um, usually it involves combining different items to make a complete garment. Uh, I record throughout the month and then put everything together and post it on the last weekend of the month. So I tend to record when I have um, something to, to talk about. And with that in mind, I will talk about my finished object. This is a light tea and it's called the Magpie Tendency by Skeinanigans. And I'll put some footage in of me wearing it so that you can see it kind of in full. And you can also see that I can't really do anything sensibly. Yeah, so. <laughs> Last month I had COVID and this became a, a COVID cast on. I wanted something that I could work on while I wasn't feeling too brilliant. Uh, something that I could work through fairly quickly and this does work through quickly. Now it's a four ply or fingering weight yarn and it's on normally six and a half millimeter needles. Now I didn't have any six and a halves uh, so I did it on six millimeter but actually the gauge worked out pretty close. I knew that it was an oversized piece so that um, I would probably be okay with gauge and although gauge is a very personal thing as a general rule I tend to go down a needle size um, I'm a bit loose so um, so I guess that I would be better off going down to a six millimeter rather than up to a seven and that seems to have worked so so that's good it's a, like I say, a simple layering piece um, I wanted something like this to go over my work frocks. Now I'm wearing one of my work frocks at the moment, one of my dresses. Um, I conduct funerals in my day job and so I wear a lot of um, black dresses. If I am going from a ceremony and when I'm conducting a funeral I'm normally wearing a jacket and something a bit more formal. If I'm then going to visit uh, a family I don't necessarily want to wear the formal jacket but I wanted something to put over one of these dresses because they can, this one's not too bad, but they can go a bit low in the clavage and uh, one doesn't want to uh, startle the bereaved. So, um, so I wanted something that would just kind of layer very lightly uh, and sort of cover this area, but without being a heavy garment. And this is perfect for the job. I'm very, very pleased with it. The yarn is by Lang. It's the Yavol Magic Degrade. Uh, I've had a look on their website. They still do this yarn, but I don't think this colorway is available anymore. Their colorways are numbers, um, but I don't think they do this one anymore. Shock horror, I had enough yarn. I had two balls and I used all but about six grams of it. So that was all to the good. 
The idea behind the um, design originally is when you have one or two balls of beautiful hand dyed yarn or that beautiful sock yarn that you've picked up that's kind of too pretty for socks and you want to make something quick with it. So this is a, a two skein sweater, even for someone of my size. And this is the largest size uh, that can be made. I still did it in two skeins. So that's unusual because whereas for a lot of people, three or four skeins is their normal for a sweater, I'm nearer the five or six because of the size of my body. So this worked because it is so oversized, it's very boxy and also because it's cropped. It's not a long piece. So everything fitted within the the 800 of the two skeins, so that was all good. Um, I didn't modify it much. I tend to be a bit of a modifier, um, but I didn't in this case. The only thing I did do slightly differently, because I can't leave it completely unchanged, can I? Come on now. Uh, I made the body slightly longer just by one repeat. It's a four row stitch pattern and I did one repeat more. But still had enough yarn for that, so that's good. Also, the sleeves. Now, there are two options in the pattern. One is for a cap sleeve, and the other is for a longer, I think it's a sort of three-quarter length sleeve. I wanted somewhere in between. So, again, I just did an extra pattern repeat or two, and then did the I-cord. Yeah, it is an I-cord uh, cast off on that one as well. So, I am very pleased with it. It's a really useful piece. I will definitely be making another. This particular yarn, although it's a four ply or a fingering weight, it felt quite fine. It felt more like a light fingering. It's um, an unplied yarn, I think. Yeah, it's a single. And it felt quite thin in places, whereas a lot of the, the hand-dyed four ply that I've got, which is kind of, a lot of it's in this container here, um, it's quite plump in comparison. So I think that will make a difference to kind of how it hangs. It will still be, you know, it will work as well uh, and it will be slightly less kind of gappy. You can see the pattern of this dress has a check pattern and you can see kind of bits of white through the yarn. But this is going to do exactly what I wanted it to do. So that is great. It also dried really quickly. I blocked it and um, it dried within a day. So that's great, again, because it's very airy. And I am extremely happy with it. So to repeat, it's the Magpie Tendency by Skeinanigans. And I'm loving it, loving it, loving it. So I think this may be the only finished object I have this month. I, I feel as if I'm kind of early on in a lot of projects. I'll do a, a roundup of whips so that you can see uh, what I'm working on if you're interested. But um, this may well be my only finished object. But I'm happy with it. It's a good one. And as I always say, knitting is not a race. So if we end up with no FOs, it doesn't matter. But I'm very happy with this one. And I've been looking at other tees, but I like the airiness of this. I like the lightness of this. For what I want it for, which is this layering piece over my work dresses, it is perfect. Because I don't want something that's going to add bulk and warmth. This is just a very light piece, absolutely spot on. The only thing I will have to be careful of are the yarn choices for my next one. Because bearing in mind I am using it in a kind of professional or semi-professional setting, I can't go for my usual neons. That might be a bit much for some people. But I do have some nice greys in there. Um, sorry, Ginny, I know you don't like greys, but I do. Um, yeah, I do have some nice greys in there. So I think that will, or greys with, with variegated colours. So I think that will work well um, for another one of these. Yes, I'm a happy bunny. Hello lovelies, it's actually March as I'm recording this bit, but if I um, had put it in the March podcast, it might have spoiled the surprise of a birthday gift. So I'm showing you now. A friend of mine had a birthday coming up and I saw this very nice stone. I'll put a photograph in as well. So it's an agate. That's how you pronounce it. Um, 
saw it in a sort of craft shop and very nice stone but on a not very nice cord very very fine cord now i think the reason for that is the stone Ooh, went in and out of focus then Ooh. i think the reason for that is the stone has quite a small hole drilled into it and so this was probably a good cord that could go through slip around the stone and be secured that way which is fine but it really didn't look very nice and I felt it kind of took away from the, the prettiness of the stone. So I thought, it's a while since I've done any kumihimo braiding. So I shall do some. Now, you'll see me doing some kumihimo. <laughs> I knew I'd get that wrong. Kumihimo now. And um, that's a different colour to what you can see here. I did make a cord that was too short. I had forgotten... The proportion that you need for the length of your original threads to the length of your intended cord but I have just finished making this cord so I've threaded that through I found a, a I was going to just thread a cord through here or put a, a silver ring and thread a cord through it but um, I found this bale sorry I'm covering my mouth I found this bale which fitted into the stone nicely so that is grand put the stone onto that and threaded the cord through and we're all good so I just need to put some crimps on the end of this cord and put a, a loop and a lobster claw so that my friend can take it on and off and we're sorted so I'm very pleased I've been able to do that. I made this cord, like I say, Kimihimo, so friendship bracelets, basically, same principle. And I used eight strands of embroidery floss to make the cord. Just in a fairly sort of random pattern. But I'm very pleased with how it's turned out. So that's good then. I hope she likes it. Just as a follow-up from the... Uh, cord and the stone put the clasps on the end so they're holding the cord in ne neatly and securely and I had a toggle clasp so I thought I'd use that rather than a, a lobster claw the lobster claws I have are the ones that I use for stitch markers so they tend to be quite big um, so I thought this would be a better look so, so yes all done Hello lovelies. The sun is doing strange things, so apologies that I appear to be half in darkness and half in light. Um, yeah, the way this room is configured, there's not a lot I can do about that, I'm afraid, but uh, you may prefer this half of my face, you may prefer this half. Today you have a choice. I have been doing some spinning. I wanted to practice my chain applying technique. Uh, for those who don't spin, chain plying is, as the name suggests, so you start off with a, a long single, so you spin from the fibre, you get a long single, and then you're basically creating like a really long crochet chain. So you pull a long chain, you pull a, a thread through it to create the next long chain. And the thing's spinning at this point, so it's plying. What it's used for, if you have... Um, a fibre that has blocks of colour and you want to retain a fairly solid colour rather than a real barber pole effect, chain plying this sun, <laughs> chain plying can work well in that respect um, because it keeps the colours together, you haven't split the fibre, you're keeping a long piece of your colour and then you're plying it with itself in a short sort of space of time. So. So that really bad description is not explaining chain plying, but it explains why it doesn't work. No, no, no. I um, am not that experienced in the technique, so I just needed to practice it. I have a lot of fibre, you can see this sort of green yellow colour. Yeah, that's making it look darker. It is quite bright. Um, it's from John Arban Fibres. I got it at a guild show a couple of years ago. And I bought a lot of it 
the idea being that it would be practice. It's I can't remember the fiber. I think it may be a BFL. I should know stuff like this and I don't, so apologies. Um but it was when I had, it was before I'd even got my wheel and it was really to give me a chance to practice and just try different techniques, try different um just try spinning at that point so so this is the chain plied yarn it's not bad it's usable um and i have a, a a magic ball that i'm putting together of four ply sport sort of weights and this will go into that um and i've got a couple of pictures here of bits of yarn from this skein and you can see some of it is absolutely fine and if you saw that yarn in a, a, a skein, you might think it's quite tightly spun. You might think, you know, something like that. But it looks fairly consistent. Elsewhere in the skein, less so. And this is why we practice. So, yeah, a skein of 50 grams. I, I haven't counted the meterage yet, but 50 grams of sort of four ply sport weight type of yarn, which will get used and was a good practice exercise. So that's all good. I have been doing some sewing this month and I have a sensible thing to show you and a less sensible thing to show you. So I'm going to start with the sensible thing which is a dress or what my grandmother always called a frock. So this is a very simple plain frock. <laughs> so scoop neckline set in sleeves, slightly A-line in shape. That's as complicated as it gets. I will, especially as this light is really going up the swanee. Thank you, son. <laughs> Let me see if I can move you around a bit. Ooh. I'm not sure if that's better or just scary, but um, I'll put some footage here of me wearing it. <laughs> which is in better light than this and as you can see very simple dress uh, with pockets it was a free sewing pattern from fabricstore.com i it was a free pattern online first time i'd ever used i have done this pattern before as a sort of sample a, a toile um i've never done this type of sewing before this pattern Previously, my sewing experience was almost exclusively the paper, the sort of tissue paper patterns that you buy with very comprehensive instructions and a lot of tacking or basting. This didn't suggest you tack or baste anything. You go from pinned to machining. It's like, oh, feels like big girl stuff. <laughs> um, so it did feel having come from that background as if there weren't many instructions but actually if you just took your time there were and also there were some links to separate instructions so for example it showed you how to make the binding to do the neck which you could also do around armholes in a sleeve um a sleeveless dress it showed you how to do the pockets um so it looked as if there wasn't much in the way of instruction but actually there was, and it was enough. If you were an absolute beginner, it probably wouldn't be, but because I had made stuff using the paper patterns before, um, it was enough that I could make this frog. Uh, the fabric I got some time ago, um, I'm just, <laughs> come into the light. Um, I'm going to try and do something with this light. It's a shame to have to shut out sunlight, but um, there goes the sun. Do, do, do. <laughs> so where were we? Yes, fabricstore.com. Oh yes, the fabric itself. So there used to be a, a place locally that was an old barn and it had lots of craft stuff in. And it's where I got a lot of my cones of very fine yarn, which came from Texair when that company um, went out of business. The, company, the the barn basically closed. Um, it was on quite a lot of land and it was sold to develop for housing. Story as old as time. Um, so I bought 
some fabric not a lot just a few a, a couple of bits uh when that was closing down because it was at a good price and i always thought that this which is a gray pinstripe as you can see um would be fine sorry that's the back you're looking at there i think no no it was the front um would be good for an outfit that i could use for work and that's what this will be it's it's a, a work dress so i can't tell you anything about this fabric apart from the fact that it is uh, a man-made fabric that didn't cost me a lot that doesn't help at all sorry I will put the link in the notes for the um, the pattern and fabricstore.com have quite a few patterns. Some are more size inclusive than others. I mean, this one is fine and I actually tried it on over my jeans where it's an A-line shape. It kind of just gets bigger. So that worked. Um, so, yes, this is a, a roomy dress. Uh, some of their patterns are more limited in size range, but this works for me very much so so I'm, I'm very pleased with that the less sensible project people who have been watching the podcast for a long time may remember that pre-lockdown i started making a skirt out of neckties <laughs> i just i paused there because i realized what a completely random thing that is to do um, this is a costume for drumming we don't have a uniform in our drumming group we just have to wear red and black and it is we consider ourselves a rabble so some of the costumes are very raggedy some are beautiful it kind of goes a bit down the steampunk line at times so you get people in you know fabulous corsets and amazing wigs and very delicate makeup and face paint and all of that and we also have people in what we call the rag coats. So these are jackets that are covered in squares of different fabrics. Very warm. Sometimes useful. Sometimes lady of a certain age, too warm. But I wanted to make this skirt. I think I'd seen the idea on Pinterest. I can't claim originality. But here is my skirt made of ties. Now those who saw it a couple of years ago... You won't remember, but it was very different. What I was initially doing is I was just butting two ties together and then using a zigzag stitch to hold them in place and doing that round and round, joining all the toy ties together. Because the ties were still intact at that point, they were folded double and they had a lining in them and it was making the skirt very heavy. It was also making it, because of the, the drape of the fabric, it would work best as a more fitted piece. And this struck me as not a good idea for a couple of reasons. Firstly, the weight. When we're, you know, doing a three mile march and half of it's uphill, um, you really want things to be as light as possible. And also this fitted shape would have looked much more elegant than the thing I've I've made. But... Again, if you're yumping up a hill, sometimes you need to kind of stride out and that wouldn't have been practical in this more fitted skirt. So I've gone for full, 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 full. So I unpicked what I had done and I'll be honest, for two years, once we hit lockdown and we weren't doing any of our events, I kind of put it to one side thinking I must think about what I need to do with that it wasn't even I must do that it was I must think about what I need to do um because I was unsure about how my initial concept was going to work out so in the end I decided to bite the bullet unpick everything I'd done which took a while <laughs> but that's okay and then undo the ties so you then unfold them take the lining out and you're dealing with a much lighter fabric and more of it because you've got the width of the whole tie I mean with some of these I have pressed this but with some of these you can see where the tie was initially folded so, so I just made I just sewed them together I cut them and I'm alternating 
the wide end and the narrow end of the ties as I go along. And then got some red fabric and sewed them in. So I've done this fairly securely. So the whole piece kind of goes in and then I've got a couple of um, strands of elastic going through. This red piece at the top is likely to be covered with whatever I'm wearing on the top half of my body. So I've got some long shirts, I've got some sort of blouse type things. So this is red in case it's seen, but it's unlikely to be seen. Now, we do like pockets on our uh, clothes. Well, many of us do. And I had a couple of ties left over and I thought they would be a great shape for a patch pocket, which reminds me, the initial Una dress pattern, the actual pattern comes with a large sort of oversized patch pocket to put on the front. I chose not to do that, but I have done it on my skirt. So I took a couple of the spare ties and made a couple of pockets. Just put a, sewn them on, put a buttonhole in. When we're doing our parades, there are always things that we have to carry with us, you know, car keys, mobile phone, money, that sort of thing. And quite often I use a rucksack, but it's it's not quite the look we're going for. You know, we want to be this, this rabbly band of drummers, not with luggage. So I thought a couple of biggish pockets. I was at one point going to put about four on, but I think two will do. And I've put a button in them so that stuff isn't likely to kind of fall out as I'm walking. So yes, my tie skirt. I will show you some footage here of me wearing it, which as you can see, I tried on over the dress. Um, so plenty of uh, flexibility in here and possibly not the neatest thing that's ever been sewn. But like I say, we're a rabble. We don't have to be polished and finessed. We can be scruffy and quirky. Sounds like my kind of thing. So those are my bits of sewing. Um, it's unusual for me to do a lot of sewing. Um, I know I set my uh, machine up in, in an old bureau to create a, a, work, a sewing workstation. So I probably will do more than I had done previously just for the convenience of all I've got to do is pull the machine forward and plug it in. I haven't got to undo all the cables and get it out from its box and all of that. But I am not someone who sews. I know a lot of people use the word sewist. That doesn't quite sit right with me. I'm a knitter, I'm a crocheter, I'm a spinner, I'm a weaver. I'm not a knitist, crocheist, spinist and weavist. So therefore I am a sewer when I sew. But I do appreciate written down that looks like sewer so I can understand why we don't want to do that. But I am an inexperienced sewer and that's the way it's going to stay. I'm not suddenly looking to go into dressmaking in a big way. I'm not looking to get lots of equipment and overlockers and serges and all those sorts of things. But it is nice to be able to, if this dress works, and I think, um, I noticed it on the, the one I'd made before and then didn't alter the pattern. I think I could do with making the shadow, shoulder, shadow? The shoulder a little narrower. I think just so that it sits a little better. So I will alter that. I mean, I I will probably make several of these dresses in different fabrics. And yeah, so I just need to, I think, narrow the shoulder slightly just so it sits more naturally on my shoulder bone rather than kind of hanging off a bit. But as most of my dresses go under jackets for work, I'm happy with that and I will happily wear it. And uh, we'll go from there. Cheers. Hello lovelies. My himself was away for a few days last week. He was watching our nephew play golf. And when he's away, some of you people who've been around a while will know that he ventures into yarn shops. That's why I'm married to him. He goes away, he comes back with yarn. What's not to like? So he was in North Devon, in Barnstable, that's where he was staying, 
and there is a yarn shop there called the yarn ball i think and the owner of the yarn shop dyes some yarn which is called the yarn hut and he bought brought me back well, he bought me and brought me back three skeins of the superwash merino double knitting yarn so the first one is called circus and it's got greens lime greens and dark greens it's got bright pinks it's got reds it's got blues it's a bit fabulous so we have this gorgeousness this one is called Aurelia and it's tonal purples and tonal yellows so that's a bit gorgeous as well and the third is called Enchanted Fairy so we've got blue similar blue to the um the blue in the circus colorway but this time with greys and with a, a lovely strong pink similar pink actually yes that they could work yes they could they probably will so yes three lovely skeins of yarn but that wasn't all he bought me he also bought me a mug which i've taken a photograph of because it's not easy to um to get on the the get all the words in because it says home is where my yarn stash is yep i think i need to get him a mug on which it says home is where my wife's yarn stash is actually i think i could market that i think there'd be um come christmas i could sell quite a few of those i think <laughs> so if anyone wants that idea there you go um yes so i've been spoiled again i'm very lucky he's gone off again today this time to a different part of the country i don't know if that will involve more yarn you'll know next month if it does um looking at the yarn shops where he's going um they had some quite nice stuff but it wasn't necessarily i mean part of the appeal is of this as well as the fabulous colors is the fact that this is a local yarn to where he was dyed by the owner of the yarn shop i don't know that the places uh where he's headed this week have the same offering if they do he may well get something if it's stuff that could be bought online or anywhere else he may not so it really depends uh what he sees that he thinks will appeal but he's a good lad that he goes and looks brownie points have been awarded <laughs> cheers <laughs> Hello lovelies, now this is, is a call out to one of you in particular, that is M Bohl, B-O-H-L. Um, this person won the green fibre in the giveaway a couple of months ago. I contacted them via their YouTube comment and said congratulations you've won. They asked for my email address, I supplied it and then heard nothing and I was asking for their postal address. A couple of weeks ago, I contacted them and said, look, I've still heard nothing from you because I thought if there's a, an email that's been sent that has gone missing or there's a problem, um, then, you know, I wanted to let them know. I'm on the last chance on this one. So M. Bowl, if you want that green fibre, please can you contact me at notquiteenoughyarn at gmail.com with, uh, with your postal address so I can post it to you, please. If you haven't done that by um, the 14th of May, then I will be redrawing the prize and offering it to someone else. So I feel I've been fair, been in contact with you twice. I hope you're okay. I hope everything's all right with you. If anyone knows M. Boll and um, you know wants to just give them a little note that i give them a little um word that i've put this call out um please do so yes if i haven't heard by the 14th of may i will be redrawing the prize thanks very much hello lovelies this is a roundup of whips i've got three major whips on the go and the first is the sweater for my sister. 
it's her birthday in June so that's my deadline and she sent me this which is from a, a women's magazine and it looks far more complicated than it is because it's all about the yarn with this one the knitting is completely plain just stocking stitch all the way through there's a note on here even a beginner could make this and they could it is very much a beginner sweater the, the shaping is very simple and it's all about the yarn I can't find a pattern name or number or a designer name on this it's using King Cole Fjord yarn I will put what details I have in the notes below now it's possible that it's I'm assuming it's a pattern that King Cole have put out so it may be possible to get hold of from them and it may have a number reference and so forth but um, I don't have any details because of the, the source being the the women's magazine so my sister sent me this and I thought well I'm gonna have to buy the yarn for this because you could see immediately it's about the yarn there's no it looks like colour work, it's a kind of fake Harl yarn, very clever fake Harl yarn because it, is, it has long patches of solid colour so it looks like you've got stripes within stripes so quite clever in that respect um, but I knew that I would have to buy the yarn which I did um, said to my sister what colour do you want, sent her the, the link with all the different colours and she wanted the same as the initial one and blues are very much her colour so no surprise I have finished the back um, excuse the slightly dodgy fold there um, that's just the, the length of stitch counter I've got uh, row hold, yeah, stitch holder I've got so you can see and like I say it's all about the yarn and it's dyed in such a way that you get these long areas of grey long areas of blue before the colour comes in so very clever in its design and very very dull to knit oh my goodness it's a good job it's my sister and it's a good job it's her birthday now part of the problem is and I was talking with with various people on a number of zoom calls about this because I have been whinging quite a lot about this um, is I can't make any alterations she wants that sweater and that's the sweater she's going to get so whereas for example with this the catty corner I could put different colours in I put a lace border on it this I've got to follow the pattern the only alterations that are being made are a little bit for body length my sister's fairly tall and I think the sleeve length as well but I will double check that um, yeah so I am working on it a bit at a time I'm trying to do kind of an hour on it every day just to keep going on it it's um, a double knitting weight yarn the pattern suggested four millimeter needles as you would expect for a double knitting weight I did a swatch and actually got gauge on three and a half millimeter needles yes yeah, so it feels as if it's a very slow growing item <sighs> but it's for my sister and it's for her birthday. This is not the sister I made the um, the Hohi Locatella, uh, Hohi, Hohi Locatelli pattern for a couple of years ago. Um, the winter folk, the long jacket with the cable panels. This is the other sister. Both 60th birthday presents, but this is the other sister. So I will keep plodding on with this. I mean, the good side is once I've done the front the sleeves I'm hoping will be relatively quick it's a drop sleeve pattern so your sleeves are kind of finishing about here it's all bottom up and seamed I don't mind seaming and then it'll just be putting the neckline in uh, the neck band in which is fairly straightforward so it's not as if there's going to be lots of fussy fiddling except that I'm going to want the stripes to match back and front and I made the mistake of doing my swatch and then using that same ball to start the sweater so this means when I went to start that so that was the back when I went to start the front 
I had to cut a bit off. So on the front piece, which is upstairs at the moment, um, I haven't got the kind of grey stripe here. I go straight from the grey and white into the blue because I literally cut it to start the blue because I'd like the stripes to match. Yes, lesson learned. <laughs> I like the yarn. I like King Cole yarns anyway. They're probably my my favourite, certainly my most used commercial um, yarn producer. This is 100% um, acrylic, feels really soft, absolutely lovely. So this is King Cole Fjord. Um, quite a good colour range on it. I think there were about eight or ten different colour ways, so quite a good range on that. And it does feel really nice. It will make a very nice sweater. It will feel warm and cosy. It's quite soft. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm hoping that my sister will be pleased with it. If not, she'll be getting no more um, fingerless gloves out of me because that's what I normally make her. But that's where we are on that one. I am, it is feeling like a slog because it is very, very competitive. No, it's not competitive, it's repetitive. But I will keep on, I know what my deadline is on this. If I can do a little bit every day, I should have no problem in, in getting it finished. And once I'm on the sleeves, I also know that the sleeves won't match the fronts because the stripes will be a different thickness, as you can see in the sample. You've got thicker stripes here than you have on the fronts. That's inevitable because of the, the length of the rows. Um, I want them to match each other, they won't match the, the backs and fronts but uh, I don't know if my sister is actually as worried about that as I am but I would just like it to look as if thought has been given to it rather than just slung together so that's project number one project number two is a tale of unpicking I was making a crochet boxy so I made, a, a, I used, again, Hohi Locatelli, often mentioned on my podcast. Um, I adapted her knitted boxy pattern last year to make a crochet version. And I was going to make another one because I, I liked making it. I enjoy wearing it. I had decided to use lace weight yarns held double. I've got quite a lot of lace weight yarns, which realistically I bought in a fit of ambition and I am extremely unlikely to use them ever as single strands because I just don't make stuff that fine and I don't make stuff that fiddly. So it ain't never gonna happen. So I started making this boxy. First of all, I made it far too big. Um, I hadn't really checked gauge and my gauge had gone very loose. So I unpicked that, started again smaller and I just wasn't enjoying it. Um, two, two lace strands held together, certainly the ones I'm using, create a very drapey fabric which is great for some things and generally would be great for a boxy but it was just looking really saggy and that's not something I need help with. So I was getting to the point where I was just not working on it because I thought, I'm not sure this is gonna happen. So I decided to pull it back, unpick it. I will make a crochet boxy, but I will use regular four ply yarn, perhaps some sock yarn. I've got, I've got enough. Not, not all of the same, obviously, but I've got enough in total to make a nice, I've got some very similar colors. I may even do a fade. There are, I have options to use four ply yarn to, to make a boxy. But that then left me still with my lace weight yarn and I had come across this pattern. I can't remember how, I can't remember what I was searching for to come across this, but this is the Paris sweater and it's designed by Gail T. Ortiz. I'll put a picture in here. And as you can see, it's just a very simple 
looks diagonally made or by, you know made on the bias drapey sweater and the description says and this is a free pattern so i'm giving away no no paid for secrets here this wonderfully drapey looking sweater looks great on everyone challenge accepted while the piece is simply a large rectangle the bias flow of the fabric and the unexpected placing of arm, neck and waist openings creates a beautiful couture sweater for all seasons. Unexpected placing of arm makes me feel like I'm going to have a sleeve a bit like that. I don't think I am. So it is, as the pattern suggests, a big rectangle. And you make one piece and then it's how you put it together. So it shows you basically where to leave gaps for sleeves, neck, body. So to repeat, it looks great on everyone. The reason why I say challenge accepted is I'm looking at this and I'm looking at the opening that's been left for the base of the sweater. And I don't think it will go around me. I'm going to have to make some adaptations. Of course, it's what I do. But it's a rectangle. So what I've done is I calculated how much bigger I think it should be. I'm crocheting this as well and that's significant because it's easy to add bits onto. So once my rectangle is finished, I will pin it according to this schematic, scaled up where I need it to be for the, the extra size on my rectangle. And then I will see if I need anything more. So, to show you this again, I might need to add more along the long edge. I might need to add more here. I might need to add more to both, side, to both um, edges. It's crochet, I can do that. And if it looks like a very scrappy sweater, that's not something that ever bothers me. But that will hopefully, if I like it, give me a template of the size of rectangle I need to make to make another, which I may want to do in a more kind of cohesive pattern, perhaps even, never let it be said, in all the same yarn. Oh, don't be silly. So that is the Paris sweater. Now, because I've been concentrating on my sister's Fjord sweater, I haven't done much very recently, but I had started it a while ago. And I'm not gonna remember what all of these yarns are. That probably doesn't matter too much. But I have here the start of my rectangle. So I started with foundation double crochets now I'm using UK terms here so uh, treble crochets and in fact all of this is pretty much the same stitch except where it's not um, so I started off with foundation treble crochets so that I could make the piece the width that I wanted without having to try and chain it and basically I wasn't swatching because I'm gonna have to adapt this as I go anyway so I thought I'm not going to swatch, I'm just going to do a foundation row of trebles until I've got the width that I require. So I did that in my first yarn and I will talk about these yarns when I'm further on in the project because I don't have all the labels with me, I don't think. I know some of them, so where I know them I will tell you. So this first one is I think a Lamington Lass yarn. After I'd done that row of this sort of dark ready plum, no not really plum, sort of dark red, I then put a row in of this lilac-y grey. I'm trying to think who that's by. Doesn't matter. Then I've got some blue that I think was from lime green jelly and already I was a bit bored. And I thought I'm going to put some patterning into this. So I've put in a few V's 
and a bit of just a little bit of texture here another row of the lilac oh god what is that yarn called if i can remember i'll put it on screen then i decided to have a really textured part So we've basically got stripes of texture here. Then back to the Lamington Mass again. And then this, I genuinely don't know what this is. This was a gift and I don't know what it is. I think it's a merino lace weight, but I have no idea. When I was talking about spinning earlier, I was saying about chain plying. You can do that whilst you're working. It seems to work better with knitting rather than crochet because um, just how much yarn you need kind of off the ball at any one time seems less with knitting. But what I'm essentially doing is chain plying, plying this yarn as I use it. So this is a very fine light lace weight, possibly even a cobweb or a thread, and I am chain plying it to get a decent thickness to work with. Now, I've already hit a little problemette in that I have some um, width issues and we can see we have a bit of a dip here. It's not just the way I'm holding it, that is a dip. I did have a think about do I want to rip this back and then work it all plain? Well, of course I don't. Why would I want to do that? That's just ridiculous. Some of it will come out in blocking, some of it won't, but I was thinking that if I have got to do, as I suspect, rows along a long edge, then what I can do is treble, 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 double treble, make some longer stitches to make up for that dip. And that also depends on how it works when it's put together in its configuration for the unusual sleeve positioning. Um, because it may be hidden as a kind of lost edge hidden in a seam somewhere. So very much an experiment on this one. It could turn out to be a complete disaster. If the worst comes to worst, I'll unpick it again. I'd rather not. I'd quite like to make a, a drapey sweater, but we will see. So I will probably still not work on this much until I've finished my sister's sweater, unless I fancy it as a bit of sort of light relief, a different craft. But that is the Paris sweater by Gail T. Ortiz. And I will keep you appraised of its progress. I said there were three projects on the go. Basically, I loved the magpie tendency so much, I've started another one. Now this is not um, a wearing for work kind of sweater. This is much scrappier looking. What I thought I would do is go for sport weight. At the beginning of this year, I was thinking about what do I want to do this year? craft wise and I try not to fit um, to fix too many rigid goals because patterns come along that you think that I really want to make I have the perfect yarn for this situations come up that you may want to make a gift for someone that wasn't in your plan so I don't like to restrict myself by having too rigid a plan but I am feeling at the moment that I want to use some of my older yarns and also some of the, the little pieces. There's, they're not quite as small as scraps, but they're partial balls and they're not really being used for anything. So I'm going to do another sweater, a bit like I did with the, the adaptation of the Pure Fuzz, the grey with all the different colours last year. Um, but I was looking at my oldest yarn on uh, my Ravelry stash page and there was some sport weight yarn that was very old and I thought oh maybe I can use that as a starting point 
see what else I've got that's sport weight and see if I've got enough to make something. Now it's going to be quite scrappy looking, but I, I'm happy with that. So I have started making a magpie tendency. I have two needles on this at the moment. <laughs> because why wouldn't you? Um, because I have started the sleeves. I want to get the sleeves done so that I can then see how much I have left of what I'm laughingly calling my main colour. Um, basically once I know the sleeves are done then I can use whatever's left in the body. So we are kind of to here. Um, there's the first sleeve. I haven't picked up for the second yet. So, But I have also got quite a bit of the body done. And I've adapted the pattern. So the initial magpie tendency was designed to use those one or two skeins of really special yarn that you just think that you you buy because you just think that is so pretty. I will I want to have something in that that yarn. And the pattern is the top half is one colour and the bottom half is another. Or you might have um, a different colour for the neckline and the saddle shoulders but basically it's designed um, to be in sort of it, most people make it in a fairly blocky way yeah. I have no idea how this is going to end um, my main colour is this now I bought this at a local yarn event a few years ago this isn't the old stash that I was talking about but this has got to be six years old or so and they don't have a website there was an email address I don't know if it's still valid uh, it's called it's Coolsley flock now I know there's a place locally well not locally there's a, there's a place near where this was called Coolsley wood so I'm assuming it's to do with that and when it was in a skein, and I think I've got a picture of the skein, I saw it as a predominantly purple and blue kind of yarn. So my usual sort of colours. But when I caked it up, it's got a lot of green in it. And none the worse for all that. It's also got some reds. It's got a lot of different colours in it. Which then gave me a fair amount of scope to stripe it with other sport weight and some fingering weight yarns that I've got these partial balls of. So that's what I've been doing. The other adaptation I've made to the pattern is it has a, a texture pattern, a four row repeat texture pattern. I'm not doing that either, but I am doing four row repeats of stripes. So I've got a couple of stripes here of um, Knit Global Softly. I've got a couple of stripes here of whistle bear yarns and then we get on to the really old yarn that I was looking to use up in the first place and I don't know if I've got a little bit left on the wall here yep yeah. so this I bought um, on Vancouver Island when we were on holiday at a shop that it sold yarn but it also sold an awful lot of dyes for, for dyeing one's own yarn um, and it had some hand dyed yarn so it had some commercial had some Noro I think so I got this which was a hand dyed 100% wool don't know what type of wool and it's a kind of beige but it has bits of pink in it so I am striping that with the same yarn so I've striped it with the main striped it with the, the purple striped it with the dark red this is all I've got left, but I do have some other sport weight yarn. I have some, this is Debbie Bliss Cash Merino, I think. So that might be a bit too white, but we'll see. And I also have this navy blue. I'm not even sure what this is, but it's almost double knitting weight, um, fingering weight, four ply weight. So or even sport weight. It's kind of in that ballpark. 
So this scrappy magpie will use up this very old thing. That's very old yarn. And this fairly old yarn. And some other bits in the process. Now, those who know the magpie pattern or who have, you know, 20 minutes ago seen my other one, they'll be thinking, where did that chevron come from? I just fancy something different. So once I'd uh, joined for the sleeves, because it's top down, so you join for the sleeves, um, I decided to put a chevron in. So it's a very simple chevron pattern that I just made up myself. I worked out my stitch count, worked out what I needed to do and did it. So my magpie will have this chevron pattern in it. I don't know how long it will be. That will depend on how much yarn I have. This is a almost a proof of concept <laughs> sweater using someone else's pattern. I mean, the, the original magpie tendency is by Melissa can't remember her surname, Skinanigans. It's her design, I'm not taking anything away from that. But it's kind of seeing what I can do with it, how I can play with it. So with colours, with ways of striping, and I'm having fun. And ultimately that's what it's all about. The fact that this is on large needles, this is on six and a half millimetre needles, is a very good contrast to the sweater that's on the three and a half millimeter needles so this is my kind of respite knitting if you like just one other point of interest um i didn't have any interchangeable tips in the six and a half millimeters i have a fixed circular which is what i'm using for the sleeves but i didn't have any tips of that size and i was looking and partly out of interest and partly because they were cheaper I have bought these, which are the Cubics, the Nipro Cubics. So these are the ones that are square. You can see that. Rather than round, they're square. Um, meant to help people with arthritis, meant to help keep the stitches uh, more even. I'm not sure, I mean, thankfully I don't have arthritis yet, so I can't comment on that. I'm not sure it's doing anything fantastic for my stitches it felt a little odd to work on first off um i could feel it but then again these are quite big needles i don't know if you'd feel the 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 shape of them quite as much on a a smaller size but very quickly got used to them happy with them i'm not sitting here thinking oh they're fantastic i must have these all in all of my projects but they're okay mild issue of uh, mild a mild case of curiosity for me which i have now sated i thought yeah okay that was fun don't need to do it again so, so this is the third work in progress my magpie tendency number two extremely modified very scrappy looking but i think i'm going to like it very much I have missed having a make-along and so we have one now starting with immediate effect and this is called the clearly not quite enough yarn sweater make-along now it's a snappy title I'm sure you'll agree I'm not making a hashtag out of it <laughs> it's too long but to enter all you need to make all you need to make she says is an adult size garment with sleeves. Those sleeves can be short or long. It can be a sweater, a cardigan, a dress, whatever. But it's to be made using more than one yarn. Um, it can be knitted, crocheted, woven. You know, you might be weaving yourself a jacket or something. All will be eligible as long as there is more than one yarn in it. And that yarn change must be clear to see. It is the clearly not quite enough yarn sweater make along. So if you are doing a sweater that has say four ply and mohair held together, but it's the same all the way through, then that isn't for this particular make along. There are lots of other make alongs that you can enter that in. Not this one, I'm afraid. 
if you're doing um, a two held together sweater and there's a change in those yarns so that you can see where those yarns change, a bit like my sheer V, comes up, um, then that is eligible. The emphasis is on the clearly. Now it doesn't have to be a huge big chunk of colour that makes you go, oh, we're you running out. It can be just a little detail. So it could be a cast on, just to give a little something, a little pop of colour like these stripes in my um, catty corner. Doesn't have to be a great big thing, but it can be any way of combining yarn. So it can be stripes, blocks, fades, stranded, intarsia, entrelac, brioche, however you want to combine yarns, as long as we can see the distinct yarns and where one changes to another, you're in. Doesn't The yarn doesn't have to come from different manufacturers or producers. Um, so for example, if you're using commercial yarn like this, this was uh, mostly made out of Serda and most of this is a striped yarn. Now this one, this little stripe here, which I'm sure you won't be able to see, um, is a different Serda yarn. This is Serda Click, which has more of a, a plied look about it, more of a barber pole look. Also with this particular sweater, um, the black at the bottom, excuse me raising my sweater up at you, woohoo! Um, this black here is not Serda, it was a different yarn but you can see that it's no longer these stripes, it's solid black, apart from where I put that stripe of pink in. So it doesn't have to be a very bright, wildly coloured item. It's just where you're using different yarns. And you could be using yarns from the same dye. You know, if you're doing something like a, um, a rocket tee, for example, I'm using that as an because that's in my head. You could have two yarns from the same dyer or manufacturer. They could be the same colourway, but you're clearly showing the changes. So I hope that makes sense. So that's why it's the clearly not quite enough yarn sweater make along. It starts with immediate effect and goes on to the end of this year. So I will close the thread. I'll probably do it 1st of January to make sure I've got all the time changes in so that everyone has a chance to post by the 31st of December, 2022. Whips are allowed as long as you're no more than 50% into your garment. And you don't have to have finished by the end of 2022 but I would ask that say 75% of the garment is done. So in theory, if you're halfway through a sweater that is eligible because you're putting different yarns in, you've only got a knit a quarter of a sweater in the next eight months and you'd be able to take part. So I hope that includes a lot of people. I'm going to run this on Ravelry. Now I am conscious that for some people Ravelry is still not a good option. Anyone who wants to take part that doesn't use Ravelry, please email me using notquiteenoughyarn at gmail.com. If you are happy for me to, what I, what I do with each um, email post is I then put it into the thread on Ravelry and that way it stays in order. So when I do a random number, it's kind of in the place that it came in or there or thereabouts. With previous ones, I've just put a post up which says, you know, number seven, Les has details. If you're sending a photograph and you're happy for me to put it on or you're happy to say, you know, please tell the world I'm making a boxy in three different yarns. You know, I'm, I'm more than happy to put those details in. That's up to you to let me know if you're happy for me to do that. Otherwise, just post on the thread. There is one thread on Ravelry. And I've done that deliberately. I know my make-alongs in the past have always had two, but just one this time, just to keep things nice and simple. And my thought process was that you can go onto the thread and you might have, you know, a couple of yarn combinations and you can say to people, what do you think, guys? Do you think 
blue and pink or blue and purple you know those kind of things and then people can respond and tell you what they think so that's my thought process there prizes because what's the point of a make-along without prizes apart from the making the thing obviously um at the end of june and at the end of september i will do random number generators on the posts on ravelry and the first one I get that's just a comment will be a pattern prize up to $15. Uh, so I will contact you and let you know. And the first one I come across that's a picture will be a yarn prize. Yet to be decided. That will probably be from a buyer that I from a dyer that I like. I won't necessarily use my bright color choose my bright colours, but from a dyer that I like. Always like to support some dyers and you know share the love then at the end of the year or rather beginning of the new year i will put together a grand prize bundle which will be yarn and other bits and pieces and i will draw that that will be announced in the january podcast i hope this all makes sense i'm just going to run through those criteria again so it's the clearly not quite enough yarn sweater make along yeah, that was said really badly, wasn't it? The clearly not quite enough yarn sweater make along. That's better. So an adult garment with sleeves made in more than one yarn by uh, and the different yarns must be clearly identifiable. We must be able to see easily where they change. Whips are allowed up to 50%. You don't have to finish the whole thing, but the expectation is that you'll have about 75% of the garment finished by the end of the year. So that's our closing date, 31st of December, 2022. There's a thread going up on Ravelry for you to post thoughts, ideas, pictures, progress, just chat with each other, respond to each other. It's hopefully a very much a community thing. And I will pull a couple of quarterly prizes and then a grand prize at the end of the year. Does that all make sense? I do hope so. If you have any queries, please do comment below along the lines of, we're talking about Les, because I, you know, I'll understand. Um, I will put the criteria and the, the kind of rules in the notes as well. So by all means, refer to them. And I think, that's probably everything. So I'm going to take a quick sip of tea. And talk a bit about life in general. I would say I've recovered from COVID because I had that before, last month. Um, I have mostly recovered from COVID. Still get periods of fatigue. I mean, I like a nap anyway, so it's hard to tell. Still got a bit of a cough and a bit of a croaky voice, which kind of comes and goes. Um, last night I took the dog out for a walk it was quite cold out when I came in I had a good 5-10 minutes when I was just coughing couldn't speak without coughing but generally touch wood all okay and people have told me that these symptoms carry on for a couple of months someone was telling me the other night they can go on for 18 months we'll just have to see I, I don't have COVID anymore. I've tested everything, but um, just have a few of these symptoms lurking, which a lot of people have had. So I'm um, no worse off than anyone else. No. So what else have we got going on? It's the end of April. So we've got drumming events coming up in the next week. And himself is away quite a bit. Um, nephew's playing golf. And then he himself is away to watch cricket. And there'll probably be some other sport in there as well. He's away a lot of weekends for football. Yeah, we really don't row much at all. <laughs> uh, generally, life is just plodding along. Um, I haven't any holiday or vacation plans this year as yet. Um still not entirely comfortable with the thought of flying abroad not condemning other people who do just not quite for me yet i don't think um 
and because himself is away a lot I don't know if he and I will have a holiday together but I was talking with some friends the other day and another trip might be planned so um, or certainly a chance to see them so that would be good that would be very good and yeah that's probably about it so I hope you're all well hope you're all keeping safe and looking after yourselves and I hope that you have time to craft or whatever it is that is bringing you happiness thank you so much for being here thank you for all the comments and the thoughts um always love to hear from you I'm I think I'm pretty much answering everyone I'm still having a few problems with YouTube studio on that but I, I think I am answering all comments so if I don't, that is not deliberate. It's just um, me not under me not kind of well understanding the technology probably, but um, working the technology properly. So, thank you so much for taking the time to comment. Thank you for taking the time to watch. It's incredibly kind of you. I will see you all at the end of May. I'll put the post up on Ravelry for the make along. So. I hope that that's one that looks interesting for you and you want to join in. If not many of you do, that makes the chances of winning a prize greater for those who do. So, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Except if you're vegetarian, obviously. So, I just go off on these little threads, don't I? These little... Mm. Take very good care of yourselves. Thanks for being here. Have fun. Keep well. Keep safe. And I'll see you again soon. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.